Mr. Mejia, can you kick us off today by calling the roll? Uh, certainly. Council Member Marquise Harris Dawson. Present. Council Member Gilbert Cedillo. Present. Council Member Bob Blumenfield. Blumenfield, present. Council Member John Lee. Present. And Councilwoman Rodriguez. Here. Uh, that's five members and a quorum, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mejia. Thank you, members. Uh, for today's meeting, we'll first begin by taking public comment. We'll take public comment on individual items, multiple agenda items, and general public comment. Our goal today is to get to as many speakers as possible. Uh, after we've done that, we'll move through the agenda one item at a time, listen to staff presentations, and vote on items accordingly. Uh, when we open the roll at some point, we will uh, close the lines and we will indicate how many people are on the line and allot a corresponding amount of time uh, for public comment uh, based on the people there that are uh, have called in to speak. Uh, there are further instructions that I'll ask uh, the clerk to read into the record at this time. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Members of the public who would like to offer a public comment on the items listed on the agenda should call 1-669-254-5252 and use meeting ID number 161-644-6631 and then press pound. Press pound again when prompted for participant ID. Once admitted into the meeting, press star and nine to request to speak. During public comment, city staff will call on members of the public by the last four digits of the phone number. By pressing star nine, callers raise their virtual hand to request to speak. Once the caller hears the last four digits of the phone number, an automated Zoom voice will ask the caller to press star six to unmute themselves when it is their turn to speak. Once the caller is ready to speak, they must state their name and the items they are calling to speak on. Failure to do so will result in the call being muted and subsequently disconnected. Appellants and or the representatives and applicants and or the representatives will be allowed to speak for a total of three minutes per side unless otherwise noted by the chair. Members of the public wishing to speak on one ag agenda item only shall have an opportunity to speak for one minute. Appellants and applicants will be given an opportunity to speak when their item is called. Each appellant and applicant has a total of three minutes to speak. An appellant can choose to have a single representative speak on his or her behalf or divide the three minutes among his or her team. Anyone else, including an attorney or project manager, wishing to speak on an appellant's behalf who does not do so during this three minute period may offer a minute of public comment whenever the committee chairperson opens the public comment period for the meeting, which is usually at the beginning of the meeting. Therefore, we expect that appellants and applicants have the respective teams assembled and ready to present at the appropriate times today. Members of the public wishing to speak on more than one item shall state that and shall be allowed to speak for a total of two minutes. Failure to raise your hand to speak in a timely manner before the comment period for the item ends results in forfeiture of the opportunity to participate in public comment for the item. Madam City Attorney, please provide additional guidance on public comment. Carrie Kaufman, the CS City Attorney's Office. When speaking on the agenda items, you must be on topic. If you're not speaking on topic, or if we cannot tell whether you're speaking on an agenda item, you will get one brief warning. If you do not immediately get clearly on topic, or if you stray off topic, you will forfeit the rest of your time, and the committee will move on to the next speaker. You will be informed when your time is up. Thank you. All right, uh, before we turn to public comment, I wanna open the floor to hear if there are any amendments from Department of City Planning or Council offices with uh, projects uh, scheduled for discussion today at this time. Mm -hmm. 
Mr. Chair, if I may, for the record, a community impact statement has been submitted by the Studio City Neighborhood Council for the matter after release of the committee agenda for item number two, Council File 21-1385. Thank you. Okay, so that's item number two, uh, which we were scheduled to hear on the consent, uh, but we will uh, revisit that to make time for that uh, public comment. Uh, all right, now we will go to uh, general and uh, multiple public comment. Uh, we will uh, begin. You can raise your virtual hand by pressing star nine, and you'll get instructions uh, for when you're called into the meeting. Hi. Am I in the meeting? Yes. Oh, hi. Thank you so much. Um, first of all, I have uh, it's item number two, and then I have general public comment. You have two minutes. Okay. Thank you, sir. First of all, uh, the general public comment is regarding uh, in the city once again giving 75% density bonus to TOC projects in our very high fire severity zone where only 30 to 35 is allowed. Communities are very, very worried about this. Uh, it's a problem with accessibility in and out of the area if we have a disaster here. Um, also, a project was approved on Franklin Avenue that's in the Alquist Priolo zone and also very high fire severity zone. And they misrepresented it in their notice of exemption and the city seems to think that's okay. So we kind of feel like, don't you guys care about us? about our safety. Um, so I wanted to bring that up. About item number two, we hope that you'll include emails as far as posting information, since so many people now get our information via emails in the electronic, the electronic way, and that, um, that we get updates and uh, all of the information that we need on projects via emails, and I don't think that's included, that you'll implement an easy to subscribe email notification system for all actions including NOPs, EIRs, NOAs, NODs, and MNDs, you know what that all means, and issuance of a project approval decisions, because we live in a rapid on online world. And if you're going to discuss updating notification, we hope that you include that. So thank you so much. Thank you, Speaker. Good afternoon, council members. My name is Sandy Brown. I'm president of the Homey Westwood Property Owners Association and vice president of the Westwood Neighborhood Council. I'm speaking on behalf of myself today, and I do believe that the findings for track map on item number seven can be made. The elder care facility is with the community plan, the Wilshire Scenic Corridor specific plan, as well as the general plan. Um, it's time that we finally put a shovel in the dirt and bring a much needed project for seniors to the Westwood area. Uh, the Westwood Neighbors for Sensible Growth who are appealing this today uh, want this project to disappear so they can keep their view. It's time for project approval. Please deny the appeal and support, uh, support the elder care facility. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Good afternoon, uh, council members. My name is Stephen Sand. I'm the chairman of the Westwood Community Council, also speaking for myself, also speaking on item number seven. Council members, here to strongly urge that you support the findings on the track map that is before you and respectfully ask that you reject the appeal that has been submitted. As the previous speaker commented, the issue that is really unstated but is the true elephant in the room is the issue of protecting views. The need for this elder care project in the community is overwhelming. The need for elder care facilities in the city has been recognized by the council through its elder care ordinance. This project is a perfect uh, complement to the Westwood Presbyterian Church next door. It has been redesigned and carefully reviewed by the Design Review Board, and it, it's out of 
contacts with Wilshire Boulevard it is the, by virtue of the fact that it is no more than 12 stories. It is a very modestly scaled project and will provide a very needed element of housing and urge that you please reject the appeal and support the track map. Thank you very much. Thank you, Speaker. Hello, am I speaking? Yes. Okay. Hi, this is David Ewing in Venice. I'm calling on uh, a public comment on item six. And uh, please r remember my public comment when the item comes up. Thank you. Uh, the city's trying to narrow and improperly interpret the CEQA guidelines to argue that there's a negligible expansion of use on this project. However, the guidelines make clear in section 15301E1 that increases in floor areas of this size, which exceed 50% of the floor area of the project buildings before the additions, do not qualify as a, quote, negligible expansion of use, unquote, as was claimed. Thank you very much, and please keep that in mind. Thank you, Speaker. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Alexis Duvray and I'm speaking on behalf of the Mount Washington Homeowners Alliance and myself. I am on the board of directors of the Homeowners Alliance um, and uh, especially the Land Use Committee. I also live um, on a parcel of land that has an open, actually three open spaces near me. Um, one of them is slated for development. Um, the Mount Washington Homeowners Alliance is a 501c4 nonprofit community group. We have approximately 400 members, and we urge you to vote for the pending motion regarding notification of construction and to broaden the scope of that motion. Currently, the notification method is to use uh, United States mail and on-site posting. Unfortunately, this only addresses a very small number of group of people who will be affected because of the radius. And um, in my case, uh, I am actually just slightly out of the radius for the construction that is planned on an open lot in my area. Um, and based on the current method of notification, I would not be notified of construction on that area. Thank you, Speaker. That's your time. Uh, Caller with the number ending in 1838, please press star 6 to unmute yourself. Great. Sorry for the delay. This is Chris Chicoyan, pastor at Westwood Presbyterian Church, uh, speaking to item number 7. I simply want to encourage you to uh, reject the appeal and keep the track map as is so that we can sustain this wonderful project to provide housing for the elderly in our community. Our church strives to be a good neighbor, and we hope that this will actually make us better neighbors by providing much needed care. We also will have facilities that are brand new finally for our preschool and I know many families in our community are eager to see that as well. Thank you for your public service. Thank you, Speaker. I want to speak on item seven, the track map appeal. 
My name is Con Howe. I'm the co-chair of Westwood Presbyterian Church's Property Committee. We've worked on this project for almost seven years and carefully chose a partner that would add an important service to the Westwood community, namely assisted living and memory care. And that is in addition to making possible new updated replacement facilities for our existing preschool and church spaces. I urge you to uphold the support of two neighborhood councils, the Westwood Design Review Board, the Zoning Administrator, the Deputy Advisory Agency, and the City Planning Commission, as well as your own approval of the environmental documents for this project. Please deny this appeal of the track map. Thank you, Speaker. Hello, this is Kate Scanlon Double of East Venice Neighborhood Association. Uh, I would like to make a comment in regards to item number six. Uh, commissioners, I'd like to direct your attention to page 10 of a submittal letter um, put into the case file today by the appellant. And on page 10, under the BOE dedication, the appellant uh, states that uh, BOE didn't include a condition of approval for any dedication along Penmar Avenue. That's correct. The BOE recognizes that not requiring a dedication along Penmar Avenue will not impact the public in any significant way. I just want to say that that's an inaccurate statement. Uh, actually, in the corrected determination letter on page 3, item 8, that you also have in your file, the BOE did not say that. They said they can't take the dedication because of the existing building. But what we're suggesting is that DOE could not take the entirety of dedication, we understand. But as they did on Palm Boulevard of this project, they could have been creative as not to further hinder, not to further hinder any you, further Speaker. That's positive your time. development of the roadway. Caller with the number ending in 9502, please press star 6 to unmute yourself. Again, caller with the number ending in 9502, please press star 6 to unmute yourself. Good afternoon, council members. It's uh, Stephen Resnick, president of the Westwood Homeowners Association, speaking on item number seven. And uh, the board of the Westwood Homeowners Association supports the Belmont project. We think this is uh, a great addition to the community and a much improved project uh, as it has uh, uh, changed along the way. And we ask that you maintain the track map and move this project forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, Speaker. Barbara Bro Broid, please press star yes, six sir. to unmute yourself. Hello, my yes. name is Barbara Broidy. I'm speaking on item number one on behalf of the Westside Neighborhood Council that has filed a CIS statement but was not mentioned earlier in the meeting, and then on item number two and general public comment on my own behalf. 
Thank you may you. begin. Uh, thank you very much. On item number one, EV charging stations, our Westside Neighborhood Council has voted, of course, to support this important measure. However, I introduced a motion that I would like to make you aware of that requested that there be permanent and uh, and clear guidelines established as to the types of signage that will be used to inform the public of the availability of the EV charging stations. Uh, we are all familiar with blue H's and different kinds of uniform signs. Signs should be limited in size and the city should specify what information should be placed on those signs so that they don't become a blight on our streets or be confusing to potential users. Thank you for considering those suggestions. On number two, notification, while this is a very important measure and we seek to improve communication with the public, it doesn't go far enough. There additional minimum notification requirements should be incorporated into the city's procedural ordinance. There should be a requirement that email notifications and mail notices be sent to all within 500 feet of a project. Current practices that sometimes allow only adjoining landowners to be notified are not adequate notice. In addition, Plum should do whatever is necessary to put into action an easy to subscribe to email notification system for all major actions on a project, including hearings, release of NOPs, EIRs, NOAs, NODs, and MNDs, and issuance of project approval decisions. The neighborhood councils, neighbors, and adjoining property owners in proximity to a project should receive email notification for every document issued about a project under consideration. Those notices should also include a website link and or email where interested persons can enroll in the email system that sends all notices and decisions via email to any individual who requests it. This is imperative uh, and, and has proven to be even a greater challenge with the pandemic, which leads me to my general public comment, which has to do with the fact that the council will soon at some point be returning to in-person meetings in a hybrid format. And I hope that you will consider a hybrid so that the public does not need to come to downtown to speak. It is important that there be a process designated to identify not only the people who are lucky enough to comment, but those who are waiting to queue and speak. When we register in person, there is a registration. We say whether we're speaking for or against an item or making general comment, and there is some record of those voices. Right now, the council may have no idea how many people were waiting to speak. And if there is, for example, a 35 item agenda, uh, there, there may be many comments on one item and nothing heard on others. So there is a need to improve the way that comments are taken and also the fact that neighborhood councils as a part of the city family should be able to comment after a staff report or a presentation on a project is given. Commenting in the initial 20 minute allocation does not allow Thank you, Ms. for Thank you, Ms. Broy, that's your time. Thank you. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. I'd just like to comment on item two, please. You have one minute. Thank you. Um, so to, regarding notice, um, the, the agenda describes this item as, quote, providing all interested stakeholders with fully transparent notices. I feel like the fact that there has to be a motion as to whether or not the city is going to be transparent with noticing is kind of a problem. Full transparency from our government should be a non-issue. Uh, the fact that there's a motion for it is, is definitely concerning and also only goes to the importance as to why this, this is so needed for people. Projects affect residents city-wide. As such, there should be proper notice. We live in electronic times now. You guys have the software and the, <clears throat> the technical procedures to, to effectively uh, put electronic messaging in place, not electronic notifications in place. It doesn't make sense why you wouldn't do it. Um, and it, that's other, another concerning matter. Thank so you, Speaker. That's I would your like time. To, uh, 
Okay, thank you. Caller, please state your Hello, name and afternoon. which item you're speaking on. Uh, general public comment. You may begin. Uh, so this is a general public comment about general public comment. Um, I just wonder uh, how realistic it is to expect that um, commissioners and people are, are taking notes um, and keeping track of who's commenting on what items. Uh, way up at the front of the meeting. I was on a uh, meeting last time. It was uh, well, last month or whatever. People weren't even identifying what agenda item they were speaking on. How are people um, supposed to know? How is this supposed to be tracked? Um, is it documented in the record? There seems to be uh, due process issues, uh, questions um, about this uh, procedure or this process. And I uh, echo uh, the comments that were made earlier about uh, electronic notices um, happening. Right, just general issues about due process and, and fairness um, that make uh, this procedure or plums hearings uh, actually uh, an opportunity for people to provide a meaningful comment that is taken into consideration and not just, uh, you know, Thank jumping you, speaker. through That's a, your time. A, a hoop or whatnot. Thank you. And that exhausts our callers list. Thank you you so much to uh, everyone who's called in uh, and uh, I'll particularly note the neighborhood councils who submitted uh, documentation. Uh, I believe we have three items uh, that can be uh, taken on consent of the committee. Uh, there's items number two, three, and four, Mr. Mejia. Uh, yes, and Mr. Chair, on item, um, I believe it's item three, if we could, um, the recommendation being to request the city attorney to prepare and present the ordinance to correct the technical error in the Olympia sign district. Uh, do we note it? Do we have? All right. Um, do we need to call the roll? Uh, if Yes, let's call the roll on those three items. Um, Council Member Harris Dawson. Yes. Council Member Cedillo. Yes. Council Member Blumenfield. Aye. Council Member Lee. Aye. And Councilwoman Rodriguez. Aye. Uh, that's unanimous, Mr. Chair, on items two, three, and four. Um, Mr. Blumenfield, did you have comments on item number two? Yeah, you know, I, if if I can, I know we just voted, but uh, just to explain a little bit, because I think there's some confusion with some of the callers, which is the motion is fairly simple. Um, you know, we have a lot of different ways of notifying people of public hearings. I totally agree about electronic communications, and, and um, I know we started doing that for various entitlements, uh, which is a great thing. This isn't about that. This is, this is really just looking at... Um, uh, the on-site postings, I've seen the public hearing postings around town and truthfully, they're confusing. And I think it'd be helpful. And the reason for this motion is to have a larger on-site sign with less technical planning language, just to make it easier for folks to know what's going on in the city. Signs that can be viewed by anyone, not just folks who have access to a computer or know how or navigate on Zima. So the lang the, the I, I think it's a fairly innocuous motion that we, you know, we just proved it's is to just take what we have, the existing language, the existing sign, make it a little bigger and a little bit more in plain language so that it's easier for folks. And it doesn't touch any of those other areas that people commented on, uh, although I'm happy to work on those areas because I'm a big believer in, in you know, transparency and maximum notice. But this is, this is just fixing a little bit of a problem that, that's been out there. Thank you, uh, Mr. Blumenfield, and uh, we'll look forward to hearing back on our uh, new and improved uh, signage uh, with regard to the hearings. Uh, that takes us to item number one, Mr. Mejia. Yes, item one is a motion for Corian O'Farrell. It's instructing the Department of Building and Safety along with the city attorney and planning to prepare and present an ordinance that streamlines and expedites the permitting process for electric 
vehicle charging stations. All right, uh, do we have comments? Uh, it looks like we have Department of uh, Building and Safety here uh, and per perhaps uh, Department of City Planning on this item. Yes, uh, good afternoon, committee chair, uh, fellow, fellow committee members. I'm Frank Lara with Department of Building and Safety. Um, so as Mr. Mejia stated, the motion request for Department of Building and Safety in consultation with city attorney and city planning to prepare an ordinance that would streamline and expedite the permitting process for electric uh, vehicle stations. Uh, we are prepared to work on this ordinance as instructed, and I'm available to answer any questions that might be related to this motion. All right. Uh, if there's no, if there are no comments from uh, Department of City Planning, uh, we've already heard from the West Neighborhood Council uh, during public comment. Uh, are there any comments or questions from members of the committee? All right. Uh, I'll move that we adopt this item. There's a second. Uh, second. Second by Mr. Boonfield. I'll, uh, Mr. Mejia, please call the roll. Uh, yes. Uh, Council Member Harris Dawson. Yes. Council Member Cedillo. Council yes. Member. Thank you. Council Member Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Council Member Lee. Aye. And Councilwoman Rodriguez. Aye. That's uh, five members and unanimous, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much. That takes us to item number five. Item five, this is a communication for the mayor relative to the appointment of Vanessa Barraza to the South Valley Area Planning Commission for the term ending June 30th, 2025. Excellent. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Barraza, for being with us today and making yourself available to serve the city in this capacity. If you could just take a few minutes uh, to tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what you hope to accomplish in your term of service uh, as a commissioner. Thank you so much for having me here today. I feel very privileged that I have this opportunity. My name is Vanessa Barraza. I am actually from the South Valley. I grew up here. I went to Irwin Elementary, Milliken Middle School, Grand High School, Pearson Valley seasons north but i am a through and through valley person i currently do also work in the sherman oaks area as well i do work for a property management company in in uh, primarily in the los angeles uh, vicinity where most of my job i do do operations for apartment communities but i also do a lot of work as far as uh working with our legal counsel to make sure that we're a part of keeping on task with certain laws and regulations as far as the city, state, or federal regulations. Um, I've also been very much a part of the community for the past 10 years. Uh, I have been a part of One Generation. I was actually a recipient of the Joy Award. I've also worked on several of the, uh, part of the Sherman Oaks Chamber and is also part of the Greater San Fernando Chamber, very involved in the catwalk and different uh, street fairs within Sherman Oaks or um, or the Encino, Taste of Encino. So very much involved with the whole entire South Valley. What I was hearing today, especially during public comment, was the whole idea of transparency, especially between constituents and the commission itself or council members. And one of the things I would like to do, if confirmed, would be to really embrace that and make sure to add that bridge. So when there is public comment that when there is an appeal or some sort of variance or conditional use permit of any kind that we do take in consideration and makes people are acknowledged and bring that, that bridge between what people feel might be where it may not be right now. Oh. So much, uh, Mr. Blumenfield. I'm having camera problems here. Everybody, please pardon me. No worries. I just wanted to, to make a positive comment. Uh, I've known Vanessa for a long time. Uh, I can speak to the fact that she really has been a part of the community in the West Valley, uh, as just cares about our community, is a person of, of passion and a person of integrity who not only knows something about planning and about, about the critical issues, but knows about the community. 
So I, I, I couldn't be more happy with the choice and, and strongly urge uh, everyone to, uh, to vote yes, uh, because I know that she's going she's gonna to help make our valley a better place and she's going to dig in the way she always does uh, in, a, in a professional manner. Uh, and it will just be a, a wonderful addition to the Planning Commission. So I urge and I vote. Thank you so much for that, Mr. Blumenfield. If there are uh, no other members, uh, Mr. Mejia, call the, please call the roll. Uh, yes, Councilmember Harris Dawson. Yes. Councilmember Cedillo. Yes. Councilmember Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Councilmember Lee. Aye. And Councilwoman Rodriguez. A big valley aye. <laughs> That's five members and unanimous. Thank you so much. Congratulations. I uh, look forward to voting uh, this all the way through on council. Thank you so much for your service. Thank you so much. Uh, that takes us to item number six, Mr. Mejia. Item six, this is a categorical exemption, uh, the environmental findings, a report from the West LA Area Planning Commission and an appeal by William Wood relative to the approval of the environmental clearance and the vesting track map to subdivide one lot into an eight lot small lot subdivision. All right, uh, do we have a report from Department of City Planning? Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Alexander Trong with City Planning. This item is related to an appeal of a project located at 1801 to 1821 South Penmar Avenue and 1169 East Palms Boulevard within the Venice Community Plan Area. The project proposes the subdivision of one lot into an eight lot small lot subdivision, which is comprised of seven residential bungalow court small lots and one small lot for parking purposes. Following the West Los Angeles Area Planning Commission meeting on November 17, 2021, an appeal was filed. The appeal cites issues related to the timing of the determination letter, building permit timing, and CEQA. In concurrence with the West Los Angeles Area Planning Commission's denial of the appeal, staff has prepared a response in a letter dated February 10th and submitted it to the council file. Thank you. All right, uh, do we have an appellant, Mr. Wood, for three minutes? Hey, uh, good afternoon, commissioners. Everybody can hear me? We can yes. hear you. Okay, so um, yes, one issue uh, was the backwards or the improper uh, processing of the, the order um, here. Uh, they uh, obtained uh, DBS permits. Uh, for remodel of existing structures and then after receiving those permits applied for the small lot subdivision instead of uh, applying for those uh, permits together as required under the municipal code. Um, but the other issue here is the CEQA exemption. Um, if you look at the letter that uh, the city planning prepared for you, uh, item three uh, on the second page, uh, Mr. Ewing noted earlier in public comment, uh, the city is in seeking to narrowly and improperly interpret uh, section uh, 15301 of the CEQA guidelines. If you look at them, CEQA exemptions there apply only for minor alterations of buildings. And then they further state the key consideration is whether a project involves negligible or no expansion of use. And then it gives examples list there of projects that do uh, not, right, or, or sorry, projects that do constitute negligible expansions of use. So a project, right, that falls outside of these guidelines would be uh, an expansion of use that's not negligible, therefore not a minor alteration, therefore no CEQA exemption applies. They say these examples include but are not limited to, right, so that's suggesting a broad reading or interpretation of the language there in section 15301. 15301E says additions to existing structures provided that the addition will not result in an increase of more than 50% of the floor area of the structures before the addition or 2,500 square feet, whichever is less. Right? The or there okay, in between 15301 E1 and 2 
anticipate this not to be interpreted narrowly as the city is seeking to do, such that the example in 15301E1 that I just read is ignored or disregarded simply because the project does not result in an increase of more than 10,000 square feet and therefore does not also qualify or fail to qualify as negligible expansion of use and thus a minor alteration under 15301E2. Nobody can test that. And so everybody here agrees that the building areas for this project increased by more than 50% of the floor areas of the structures before the addition and by more than 2,500 square feet. Okay. So clearly, right, the uh, example, right, the criteria in 15301E1 uh, are met here. Okay. So that uh, is what puts this project right within uh, the qualifications or within the realm right, of projects that are going to uh, require CEQA. The exemption does not apply. The city seeks to ignore the language that is there in 15301E1 uh, and say because the requirements of the conditions for uh, 15301E2 are not satisfied, we don't pay attention to 15301 Thank you, Mr. Wood. That's your time. All right. Um, now we'll hear from our applicant. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Tony Russo. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, hi, everyone. This is Tony Russo with Crest Real Estate representing the applicant for the project. Um, hello, committee members, and thank you for taking the time to review this project today. Uh, the proposed project involves a bungalow court, small subdivision for the seven existing units and garage structure. Um, our team has responded to the appeal points and has submitted them uh, to the state call for review. Uh, we believe that the points of appeal are either factually inaccurate or do not raise a substantial issue that would require a modification of the proposed project and associated approvals. Um, the project is a unique and rare project in the city uh, where adaptive reuse of the existing bungalow court can be accomplished, uh, which allows for an increase in the diversity of housing in this area of Venice and the city. Um, as a result, the project is compliant with and promotes the various goals of the general plan framework and housing element, the Venice Community Plan, uh, the Small Lot Design Ordinance, and the City's Adaptive Reuse Ordinance. Um, we hope that the Council agrees and supports this project. Uh, thank you again for your time. All right. Uh, do we have any uh, comments from Council District 11? Mr. Douglas. Hi. It is. Uh, good afternoon, Council Members. Jason Patrick Douglas, Senior Planning Deputy, Council District 11, Office of Council Member Mike Bonin. Uh, the Council Member concurs with Planning's initial recommendation and concurs with West Los Angeles APC's uh, determination to deny the appeal. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, if there's no further discussion from committee members, I'll move uh, that we deny the appeal. Um, and Second. Mr. Seconded by Mr. Cedillo. Uh, Mr. Mejia, if you could read the specific instructions into the record uh, and uh, yeah. call the roll. Yes. To deny the appeal filed by William Wood from the East Venice Neighborhood Association and thereby sustain the approval of the West LA Area Planning Commission's approval of the vesting tentative track map, the associated conditions of approval, the environmental clearance, which is a categorical exception from CEQA and the findings for the subdivision of one lot into an eight lot small lot subdivision for the property located at 1801 through 1821 South Penmar Avenue and 1169 East Palms Boulevard and as stated on the record by the CD11 senior planner Jason Douglas at today's meeting. I will call the roll. Council member Marquis Harris Dawson. Yes. Council Member Cedillo. Yes. Council Member Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Council Member Lee. Aye. And Councilwoman Rodriguez. Aye. That's uh, five members and unanimous, Mr. Chair. 
Excellent. Uh, that takes us to our seventh and final item, Mr. Mejia. Yes, uh, item seven is a sustainable communities environmental assessment, the SCIA, the related CEQA findings, and a report from the Planning Commission and an appeal by Kay Wallman relative to the approval of the vesting track map uh, to re-subdivide six lots into three lots for a new elder care facility and a child care facility with 10 commercial condominium units. The property is located in CD5. Excellent. All right, we'll begin uh, this conversation with a report from the Department of City Planning. Thank you. Good afternoon, council members. This is Dylan Satig with Los Angeles City Planning. Item seven is a second level vesting tentative tract appeal in the Westwood Community Plan, reviewed under case number VTT 82107 at 10822 West Wilshire Boulevard. The project involves the merger and subdivision of six lots into three lots with 10 commercial condominium units, designation of yards as shown on the map, and a haul route for 62,000 cubic yards of dirt. Lot one would accommodate the existing sanctuary. Lot two would be for a new 12-story elder care facility containing up to 53 senior independent housing dwelling units, 77 assisted living care housing guest rooms, and 46 Alzheimer's or dementia care housing guest rooms and associated residential amenity and service areas. Lot three would accommodate a new two-story childcare facility containing classrooms, administrative office spaces, and a multi-purpose space and church-related administrative offices. The existing preschool, fellowship hall, and administrative offices, surface parking lot, and a church-owned single-family residence will be demolished. The project is related to case number ZA, 2018-3422, ELD, CU, DRB, SBP, SPR. On May 18th, 2021, the City Council adopted a Sustainable Communities Environmental Assessment for the project, pursuant to Public Resources Code, Section 21155.2, and made all the requisite findings. The advisory agency's initial determination approving the project with conditions was issued on July 21st, 2021, one appeal of the entirety of the advisory agency's action was filed by an aggrieved party. The first level appeal was denied by the City Planning Commission on November 4th, 2021. On December 10th, 2021, the entirety of the City Planning Commission determination was subsequently appealed to this same this body by the same appellant. The appeal in its entirety is in the council file. The second level appeal failed to present any new information or substantial evidence to dispute the city's previous findings for approval. The city has already adequately provided details and full responses to each of the appeal points supported by substantial evidence in the record. Planning staff transmitted to the council file a staff response to the appeal points raised. However, we would like to highlight a few for your attention at this time. Appeals, appellant contends that the project is not consistent with the general plan, Westwood community plan, or the Wilshire Westwood Scenic Corridor specific plan. However, the appeal fails to provide specific details showing how the proposed project does not adhere to those plans. The record contains extensive findings of consistency with the applicable policies and regulations, and no new substantial evidence has been raised by the appellant regarding the analysis. The project is consistent with the general plan, community plan, zoning code, specific plans, elder care facility, unified permit, conditional use permits, and track map approved as part of the project. The site today does not have a low density character as purported by the appellate uh, site is within a part of the city that is largely oriented around multifamily residential towers to the east, as well as commercial towers to the west along Wilshire Boulevard and is designated for very high residential land uses in the Westwood community plan. Other appeal points relate to the project's sustainable communities environmental assessment, which was adopted by the city council on May 18, 2021. As such, the SCIA is not further appealable. The City Council is the ultimate decision maker for the purposes of CEQA, and there is no basis to find that any changes to the project or circumstances have occurred, or new information has become available that was not known or could not have been known with the exercise of reasonable dil diligence. After Council's consideration, such that the City Council's adoption of the SCIA and SCIA findings for the project are no longer supported by substantial evidence or that a new significant impact would occur. Therefore, planning staff recommends that the Plum and City, and City Council deny the appeal. Uh, so that concludes my presentation. I'm available for any questions. Thank you for your time. 
Thank you so much. Uh, we'll now hear from uh, our appellant in this case. Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay, fantastic. Good afternoon, council members. Christina Kropp of Luna and Glushan here on behalf of the appellant's Westwood Neighbors for Sensible Growth, a large group of single and multifamily residents surrounding the proposed projects. There are two reasons we urge this committee to grant the within appeal today. The fact that the track map is not consistent with the city's general Westwood community or Wilshire Westwood scenic corridor specific plan. And the fact that the project is likely to cause substantial environmental damage as the SCIA pro previously considered by this body is not only inappropriate under CEQA, it ignores significant impacts with boilerplate conclusions. The major issue as to plan consistency is this idea that the project, which includes a laundry list of deviations from both the municipal code and specific plan is substantially in conformance therewith. Um, you know, it's interesting because the community plan as well as the specific plan spell out particular issues concerning the community which the plans are enacted to help alleviate, to resolve, to inhibit action by the city which would further advance and further degrade these underlying conditions. For example, the community plan specifically calls for a policy to maintain low density character of single family neighborhoods and avoid encroachment into adjacent neighborhoods from commercial uses such as spillover traffic. The specific plan expressly was amended to avoid, and I quote, a solid wall of high rise buildings with very little usable publicly visible open space along Wilshire, Wilshire Boulevard. And yet here we have this project a project that will fill in an existing gap and will become the very solid wall of high-rise buildings along the boulevard that the specific plan meant to uh, stop. The project will cause an unreasonable encroachment and adverse impacts to the single-family residential homes immediately behind it with spillover traffic that the appellant, uh, excuse me, that the applicant will have you believe is not a big deal and has not proposed any mitigation measures of course, it is impossible to mitigate an impact which is expressly ignored. Um, as to environmental impacts, I will note that after this body considered the SCIA prior to the project entitlements, the applicant submitted information, new information into the record, which substantiated the very point that appellant had made previously, that the project is not a residential project and it is error for the city to simply look at the underlying zone the definitions of the municipal code to determine what is and what is not considered a residential use. This approach has been litigated and has been determined by the courts to be an error, as outlined in our uh, more detailed letter to you. All of this information was submitted after this body considered the SIA, and it is error for the city to not require further an analysis, indeed any analysis of functionality, Thank as you, required Crop, by that's the your courts, time. rather... All right, um, do we have uh, comments from Council District 5? Mr. Skolnick, I believe. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Daniel Skolnick, uh, Council District 5, Senior Planning Deputy. Um, we would like to thank the staff for their thorough analysis and the Council Office's concurrence with the staff recommendation. Thank you. All right, uh, if there are no further questions or comments from okay. committee members. Um, is yeah, is the is there a representative from the applicant? I'm sorry, Mr. Armbruster. Thank you, Ms. Coppersius. Hello. Hello, this is Mark yes. Armbruster. My my apologies. You're on for, you're on for three minutes. Uh, no problem. It's Mark Armbruster with Armbruster Goldsmith and Delback, and we're the uh, land use attorneys for. Uh, the applicant, Belmont uh, Village Senior Living, uh, for this absolutely terrific project. Um, and we're here to urge you uh, to deny this meritless appeal uh, of the track map for this uh, much needed pro elder care project in Westwood. Also, I think it's important for you to note that this project has been approved by both of the Westwood Neighborhood Councils. I don't believe any other project has received 
recommendations of approval for, from both of those neighborhood councils. Also, it's the support uh, of the Westwood Homeowners Association, who spoke earlier, the unanimous approval of the Design Review Board, uh, and other groups. I think the uh, City Planning Commission clearly recognized that the opposition uh, to this project is mostly from uh, the neighboring high-rise condominium owners uh, next door to, who are trying to prevent this much lower proposed building. This would be a 12-story building next to their 24-story building. They're trying to uh, uh, claim that this, or the City Planning Commission recognized that this was all about uh, them trying to protect uh, their unobstructed views. I, I think it's really disingenuous, and the commission said this as well, really disingenuous that people in a 24-story building are complaining about a 12-story building uh, next to them as being uh, too high. The only inconsistency that this project that is being proposed, the only inconsistency that exists is that it's too short, if anything, uh, definitely uh, not too tall. Um, I'd just like to mention a couple of other things briefly that in terms of um, uh, work with the, the applicant has worked with the community um, and as a result has made significant changes during this process uh, to the project, including a significant setback of the, up, of the uh, higher levels uh, of the building. Um, in addition, uh, traffic has always been raised as an issue here, even though this is really about views, but traffic has been raised um, as an issue. But there could be a better project for traffic than an elder care project because obviously the elder, elderly drive less and a good part of the staff, a majority of the staff for the project take pu public transportation. So we'd really like you to um, concur with the zoning administrator, the city planning commission, the neighborhood councils, the HOAs, uh, the DRB, and the city council office in uh, denying this appeal and approving this very Thank you, Mr. Armbruster. That's your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much to the applicant and the appellant. And uh, I want to thank city attorney for catching us. Uh, I'll give uh, Mr. Skolnick another opportunity to come forward now that we've heard from both the applicant and the appellant. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Daniel Skolnick from uh, CD5. Uh, the council office position remains the same. Uh, the uh, recommendation is to deny the appeal um, based on staff's recommendation. Excellent. Uh, so if there are no further questions or comments from members of the committee, uh, I'll move that we deny the appeal with the ex specific instructions to be read by Mr. Mejia. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Cedillo. Uh, Mr. Mejia, can you read the specific instructions and call the roll? Yes. To deny the appeal filed by Kate Waldman from the Westwood Neighbors for Sensible Growth and thereby sustain the Planning Commission's approval of a vesting tentative track map for the merger and resubdivision of six lots into three lots for the construction of a new elder care facility and the construction of a new child care facility and 10 commercial condominium units for the properties located at 10822 West Wilshire Boulevard and 10812 West Ashton Avenue located in CD5 and as stated on the record at today's meeting by the city planner and by the CD5 representative Daniel Skolnick, and we'll call the roll. Council Member Marquise Harris Dawson. Yes. Council Member Cedillo. Yes. Council Member Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Council Member John Lee. Aye. And Councilwoman Monica Rodriguez. Aye. That's five members and unanimous, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mejia. Can you confirm that that concludes our regular business for today? It concludes our business for today, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much. Thank you, committee members. Thank you, staff, city attorney, city clerk. We are adjourned. <laughs>